What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Form Check Friday. Now, if you're new to this series, what we're going to do here is we're going to take a bunch of viewer submitted videos. We're going to pop them up on this screen behind me, and I am going to use my best powerlifting and coaching advice to help people out and try to become more efficient lifters and ideally end up lifting a little more weight. So for anybody who was around last week, we left off with Jesse. Now, Jesse's doing some bench press here, and we're going to get this going in the background while I give the context over again. So what we did last week was we left Jesse's video up at the end of our last form check Friday, and we had everybody comment in the comment section below with some advice for Jesse. So hopefully there was some good, useful information there for you, Jesse. And today I'm going to dive in on you. I'm going in on you, man. Um, all right. So Jesse says he's been strength training for about 15 months now. He said he originally wanted to just get jacked, but quickly found more enjoyment in the pursuit of strength. That sounds good. Didn't we all? As of writing this email, he's five weeks out from his first powerlifting meet. He'll be competing at 198 in the USPA. He says his current 1RMs are 375, 205, 465. He says he's pretty strong when it comes to the squat and deadlift, but his bench has been an absolute grind for me. I feel you there, man. I've been running Greg Knuckles Intermediate three times bench program since September, trying to drive my bench up in preparation for the meet. It's been going well and has helped, sorry, his bench. I'm still talking in the third person, first person here, but uh, his bench, uh, which has helped him quite a bit, and his bench was only 185 in September. So without further ado, here is his bench. It's 160 for five. He says he's hit 205 multiple times at nine RPE, but failed 215 last week, and it wasn't even close. So this should be around 80%. Now, I'm going to start from the beginning here because I want to see setup. Now, for anybody who's watched Form Check Friday with me before here, what we're going to do is one of the first things we like to look at is, okay, what's his position like? What's the position of his body like when he unracks the bar? So this whole process here is what we're talking about when I say setup. So setup looks pretty okay. I think we could probably get the shoulders a little bit more depressed. I too like to uh, unrack with my butt up off the bench, but anybody who wants to compete in powerlifting, you're going to have to have your butt down on the bench when you're completing the lift, when you're going through the motions of the lift. So let's see here. We unrack. Shoulders are in a pretty decent position. I think we could potentially pull the bar out a little bit further. So instead of being here, maybe just there. And let's get into the actual lift itself. Okay, so the big thing that I see right off the bat here is if I draw a line right on the f or the top of Jesse's delt there. Now, one of those things, if you'll remember, that I said was we really want to pull these shoulder blades down. The big things we're looking for in bench press positioning with the upper back is we're looking for the shoulder blades to be pulled down and together behind the back. So you can almost imagine you're pinching a beer can back there or something like that, whatever, uh, whatever sort of imagery you want to use, whatever helps you imagine it. I like beer cans, so we're going to go with that. Now, watch what happens as Jesse presses the bar away right here. So at this point, you can already see it starting to happen. Watch that shoulder and watch that line that I made. Whoop. A huge amount of elevation, huge amount of that shoulder pushing upwards. And then we're in that elevated position for the rest of the bench press with the shoulders very shrugged up, up like this when we want them very far down. That to me is probably the biggest thing that I would want you to work on here, Jesse, is making sure that as you go to press, we're squeezing the back. One of the cues that I really like is to squeeze the back as you press. <coughs> when you're down on the chest, squeeze the back and then press. Make sure you're keeping that upper back, those shoulder blades tight, nice and tight, and make sure you're keeping that, that chest kind of pulled up to the bar. The last thing I'm gonna comment on here is if we can get back to just after the unrack. All right, so right here we can see, I believe this is the end of the knurling. Here's the center knurling. So I would probably say you could get your grip out a little bit wider. Um, we can see that when you're in the bottom of the bench press, we're actually pretty far down with the, uh, the humerus here. The elbows are pretty low in relation to the body, and I think we could possibly be in a bit better position if we trim some range of motion by going a tiny bit wider. And that is pretty much what I've got for you. So hopefully that helps my man. Next up is John. John's doing some deadlifts here. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just going to find his dead. There, there we go. Um, so he's 6'3", long femured, weekend warrior power lifter looking for a form check. He says he's really enjoyed the positive benefits of being a part-time power lifter uh, on his overall health and fitness, but he's always looking for ways to improve. He says with his longer legs, getting quad engagement in the bottom of the deadlift has always been a struggle. He knows his hips rise, especially as he starts to push up into the higher weights. He's noticed that if he starts with the hips any higher, he loses a lot of the quad engagement he feels when he starts a little slower or lower, sorry. 
He says he's noticed a couple of tall lifters, especially strong ones, who start their deadlift from a lower position and whose hips appear to shoot up while lifting world-class weight. What are your thoughts on, or sorry, what are my thoughts on his form generally? Um, it's tough out here with long femurs. All right, <clears throat> so the, the the biggest thing that I'm noticing right off the bat here is your start position. Your, your shins are very much over the bar. Now, a lot of times what we're looking for is we're looking for a more vertical shin angle. Now, that's not necessarily, I mean, there's always exceptions to the rule, and I think this is an interesting one because you are such a long individual. Now, if anybody out there has been following the channel for any period of time, you'll know who Dylan is. He's our cinematographer, videographer, whatever you want to call him. Um, he actually, for a long time, preferred deadlifting on deadlift bars because they allow a little bit more room, and this is going to be the biggest thing I'm going to recommend is try to get your feet out a little bit more. I think getting your feet out a little bit more will allow you a more vertical shin angle um, and a little bit of a more consistent start. Now, we can see, like, as you start the lift, the hips definitely do come higher. So this isn't a bad position, but, and this is where we're starting to see the bar kind of come off the floor. If the feet are a little bit wider, that's gonna stack the knee over the toe or over the feet a little bit better, which I think is gonna allow you to have a bit more consistent start position. Now, I'm not sure what's going on with this platform here. You got some some weird like uh, pads on there or something. Um, and it looks like the bar is almost too long for the, the platform. So maybe it's worth building the platform out a little bit so you can put your feet a little bit closer to the plates but that's gonna be the biggest thing I would recommend is trying to get your feet a little bit wider because you're so long, you have so much range of motion and you have so much leg, it might be worthwhile to get those feet out a little bit more. So let's try that out and see how it goes for ya. Up next, we got Joel and Joel's doing some squats here. Uh, he says that he's been lifting for roughly one and a half years, um, but he's been focusing, focusing most of those on deadlift and bench form. So squat is his last stop. He says, here's a video of 325 double. He says he struggles to hit depth without getting butt wink and has been trying to get to the point where he doesn't get butt wink. All right. Number one thing I'm noticing here right off the hop is I would, I would, I would be interested to see how a lower bar position would feel for you. This is a very high bar position and you'll see why I'm concerned about that in a second. Nothing wrong with high bar, but watch the bar right there. So I'm not sure if anybody caught that, but as Joel comes up out of the bottom, what we'll see is right there. That bar starts to roll forward on his back. The bar rolls forward, and when the lever is really long, when the lever of your torso is really long, having that high bar position um, can be a bit tough. So the uh, other big things I think that are, that are contributing to that sort of feeling of getting bunched up in the bottom, and you can see right about here, we start to change the back angle quite a bit. And again, I still think we're in a pretty good position here even in the bottom position with, with the dreaded butt wink. I still think you're okay. I'm not too worried about the butt wink, um, but I, I'm not a huge fan of a big shifts in torso position when we're under load because that leads to inconsistencies. So the biggest thing I would try here is also, um, as with the last lifter, I would try to get your feet out a little bit wider and or push your knees out more. I think that's gonna give you a little bit more room into the bottom. Right now, it looks like your torso is kind of running into your quads, which is causing you to get a little bit doubled forward. As well as maybe a little bit lower bar position and a little more focus on these muscles in the upper back, staying nice and tight and not allowing that bar to roll forward like it did on that first rep. And I hope that helps you. Next up, we got Aaron doing some bench press. There we go. And let's get some context here. So Aaron's a powerlifter from the UK. He's been competing for six months in the IPF with a year's training in general. Bench is his weakest lift and would like to know if there's anything that can be improved. So as with our first lifter, Jesse, we're going to dig into the setup first and foremost. Now, I actually really like his setup here. We've got a fair bit of retraction and depression, those being shoulder blades down uh, depression and shoulder blades together is retraction. So it looks like we're also contributing a lot with leg drive. One of the big things we want to be doing is pushing ourselves back up the bench to contribute to that pressure on the traps, which is going to drive the chest up. Out of the rack, maybe a little bit of movement, a little bit of shakiness in that upper back, but I think it's okay. And let's see here. Pretty darn good pressing, honestly. All right, so overall, very good pressing. 
The one thing I'm going to critique you on is the consistency of your touches. Now, if we watch here specifically, let's watch that again. Nice light touch, doesn't really sink into the chest. I like that. This next one sinks a little bit into the chest before it presses. And the third one sinks even a little bit more into the chest before it presses. So what I would work on is trying to make all of your touches more like this first, where we're keeping the weight of the bar in your hands, not allowing it to rest on the chest, but rather controlling the touch right against the chest without it actually pressing into the chest. Now that is being a little bit nitpicky overall, Aaron, I think you have a pretty great bench press and I'm not too worried about it, but we're on here to be critical and that's what I'm gonna do. So I would work on the consistency of your touches and I think that's probably the biggest factor there. Now our last one for today, um, before we get to the, the sort of audience submission or the, the one that we're gonna leave with the, the comment section, we have Simon. Now Simon here has only been doing sumo, he's from New York, he's only been doing sumo for a few weeks and decided to, to attempt a 1RM. He made a 30 pound PR uh, over his 315 he hit previously with conventional. He says it felt heavier than it looked and he notices he could probably lock out a bit better. Um, he's wondering if there's anything else he could do to adjust it moving forward. Now, <clears throat> With uh, Simon's lift here, I really like this start position. And I also really like how his back position stays relatively similar throughout the first phase of the lift. Now, obviously his torso comes up a bit, but the angle of it doesn't really change when we're talking about the first phase of the lift, everything we're seeing is coming from knee extension. And that's one of the biggest cues I have for people is to, to learn how to feel like you're pushing the floor away, like you're doing a leg press with your sumo deadlifts <clears throat> or even deadlifts in general, depending on the lifter. Now, that to me is a really, really great start to the lift, but I do agree there are some things we can clean up at lockout. So as we come through here, it looks like the knees probably unlocked a little bit. Uh, it looks like as we came through the transition point, we, we got into a little bit of a shrugged up position. Um, so the shoulder blades are rising instead of staying locked down into the back. And that causes the shoulder blades to come forward. If we pull the shoulder blades down, it'll keep them nice and snug against the rib cage, as opposed to being elevated where they're more likely to fall forward and pull us out of position. Like you can see, Simon's getting a little bit of a position at lockout there. It also looks like maybe we're losing the grip a little bit. So that's another thing to work on and probably try to get your hips through a little bit more. So right there, I would continue to push the hips through, keep these shoulder blades locked down and make sure that our knees are locked throughout the whole end of the movement. <clears throat> but I do really love the start position here. I think as well, even in the start position, we could work on getting those shoulder blades down more. Don't worry about getting them back. Even a little bit of protraction is okay. So a little bit of the shoulder blades forward, as long as they're locked down, you should feel a lot of tension and pressure right here. Like you're trying to pinch your armpits shut really hard. All right. And our last one, we're gonna leave you all with our boy, Daryl. Now let me pull up Daryl's email <clears throat> and get you all just a little bit of information. So Daryl left us a whole bunch of context here. He says he's 68 kilos, PR is 100. This is 83 kilos for three. He says he's not planning on competing. He's been training on and off for about three years. His goal is to be able to hit 120 kilos by the end of next year. Now in his uh, sort of, he, he gives a, a critique of his own lift here, which I think can sometimes be useful. So in his opinion, his lockout is relatively strong. Um, he says the negatives are that he feels weak and unstable out of the bottom. He's not sure that he's really feeling it in his legs the way that he wants to. Uh, he says he's afraid to lock the knees out entirely. He's not sure if he's supposed to. Um, and he also mentioned something about flat feet. So that's, uh, that's it. We're going to let this play through one more time. And I'll remind everybody that if they want their form looked at for Form Check Friday, go ahead and send those videos to formcheckfriday at gmail.com. If you like this style of content or if you want a more live and interactive version, come by our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Calgary Barbell. We live stream on there, live form checks, Q&As, all that kind of stuff. Get to know Dylan and I a little bit. And that's going to be every 
Friday <laughs> at noon, 12 p.m. MST. And like I said, twitch.tv slash Calgary Barbell. So make sure to hit that subscribe button, like the video if you liked it. And thank you all for watching. Make sure to leave your comments for Daryl below. And uh, we'll get some good constructive criticism for our boy here. We'll see everybody in the next one. Uh, bye bye